Say, can you see? Beautiful balls. It's around the 4th of July, boys. And you're not going bald like an eagle? How patriotic of you is that? Not much. Luckily, my friends at Manscaped want to make sure that your stars and stripes are spangling on America's favorite day. Their products are beautifully designed to have your body looking mint from head to toe for the beach, pool, or maybe a late night festivity. So join 4 million Pew Patriots worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. That's 20% off and free worldwide shipping with our code DC at manscaped.com. Guys, this here is the American dream. Now, another guy that's gonna try to live the American dream is Jared Cannonier. Let's get to the interview. Hey, Jared. I never thought I'd meet somebody with feet worse than mine, dog. <laughs> oh, he don't. What do you have going on? What do you got going on down there? I thought my shit looked horrible. You run outside with no shoes still? No, but I do uh, train with no shoes. You know, wrestling has done Let my feet. Wrestling has done my oh, feet. No man, justice, I, I brother. I saw the bottom of them. Yeah, dude. That's wrestling right there. That's wrestling. That's striking right you know, there, but that's you wrestling. You can't wrestle with no shoes. You well, wrestle with no shoes? Well, we're, it's mixed martial arts. We, we wrestle with no shoes you in know, mixed my, martial my, arts. My, my teammates would get mad at me because I would kick with my wrestling shoes. Yeah. And then, I heard that was kind of like taboo with some people. but Dude, people hate it. And kicking up the middle. Oh, yeah. doing, the, doing the push kick sucks because you catch the elbow, but not with wrestling shoes. Not with wrestling shoes. I would kick the shit out of Rocco and those guys with Ooh, wrestling shoes. They would I have, would like, hate to be your training partner. <laughs> Dude, it was nasty. It was nasty. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did get some wrestling shoes after my calluses started splitting. Yeah. I had to start taking care of them a little bit more. My man. You but I do tell, need a pedicure. You can tell you can wrestle. Oh, you I need a wrestle. Well, you need more than a pedicure, though. <laughs> you look like, if I took my shoes off right now, everybody would scatter. Oh, yeah? It might be worse than yours. They okay. don't, I'm not saying they stink. But they look like... Uh, well, at least they don't stink. You see, my toes are exposed, so my feet <laughs> definitely don't stink. I know they don't. Yeah. Smell good, my guy. Feet smell good. Guys, I'm here with my man, Jared Cannonier. Oh, they panted to my man feet. No, <laughs> Damn, they, 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 they don't you like that. Feet, no. I'm here These with are Jared. for kicking, not kicking. <laughs> They're for kicking. Guys, I'm here with Jared Cannonier. Uh, a few days before he challenges Israel Adesanya for the middleweight championship of the world. Jared, thank you for checking in. With your boy DC, it's the DC check-in, you know. Okay. So, uh, how's it feel, man? You're a few days away. We were just talking a little bit. Family's on their way. Wife is down the night. How many people do you have coming to this, this first title fight? Well, I don't have anybody coming. There's a lot of people who have decided to come though. Okay. I am not dealing with travel. I'm mm -hmm. not fielding any questions. Don't ask me. Can Nothing. I curse on this? Yeah, you can curse. Do whatever yeah, you don't want. Don't ask me shit. I am getting ready for fight. Yeah. Getting ready for a fight. So. Um, you know, they're all excited, you know what I'm saying? But me, I'm being, I'm getting prepared. So yeah. uh, that's the state of mind that I'm in, a state of preparation and being ready for Saturday night. You have to, right? Because you've been waiting for this for a long time. Yes. You were on the verge and then you ran into the Robert Whitaker fight. Mm -hmm. Very good fight in Abu Dhabi, but ultimately lost the fight. Had to rebuild back to this point. So you can take nothing for granted. But unfortunately, in the, a lot of times in those situations, people want to call you and ask you about stuff. I remember my first title fight, mm -hmm. and I'm like, yo, I'm not getting you tickets. Yeah. How do people still make that mistake? Like, hey, Jared, you got a couple tickets to the fight? We're not fighting at the Alaska Fighting Championships right, anymore, right. right? Yeah. You know, I ignore a lot of people. You do? You know, man, I don't, I don't return calls. I won't return <laughs> texts. You message me in DMs. If it ain't worth my time, I'm not yeah. going to really uh, stop what I'm doing to deal with yeah, it. Yeah, you know for saying? sure. Especially if it's going to take energy away from things that I want to be, mm -hmm. uh, contribute my energy to, um, i.e., getting ready for this fight. Mm -hmm. So, um, my wife has been integral in fielding a lot of the questions. She runs the site that that we sell our shirts on. Yeah. So um, she's integral. So that's why I plan on Saturday night after Dana puts it on me, I plan on taking it off and putting it on her. Oh, really? Absolutely. She's been that much of a part of oh, what yes. you've done. Yeah, she was there from before I started this. She was there. Yeah. When I got kicked out of the military and we're on, you know what I'm saying, unemployment, pregnant, she's, Just she held was you there. Down. Uh huh. Just held held it down. down big time, you know what I'm saying? Helped guide me in the right direction, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was her hands that put us in, the, it was the help of her hands that put us in Alaska, you know what I'm saying? Um, so. Uh, You're grateful for that good oh, woman. Oh, I can't, I can't do nothing, I can't not be grateful for it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's prominent. I but, think um, a lot of people mistake that. Right, they see us out there. They see you 
in the spotlight, but they don't understand what's behind you. And yeah. A lot of times there's a strong woman back there Absolutely. that's uplifting you to uh, go to these heights. Now, Jared, you have been in the UFC now uh, for, for some time. You fought in three weight classes. You're finally on the verge of this first championship fight. But I can recall times whenever you would be in fighter meetings with us, and you almost manifested it. Right, you, I remember that was a change in you uh, after a little bit. I don't know if when you started getting skinny, but something happened to Jared Cannonier where that was a change. You were much more clear with your thoughts. You were much more focused. You were much more direct in your intentions. What was that? What, what brought about that change? Because it was very noticeable, even to me when I was getting ready for the commentary job. I would say it was an, a, a shift from being religious to being more spiritual. Mm -hmm. You know, I put down, I put, down a lot of uh, traditional religions. And um, I started focusing on the spiritual side of myself and enhancing that. Mm -hmm. um, everybody knows about the stones and things like yeah. that. And I don't worship stones, but I only use stones as a means to help me with my self-improvement. You know, it's like a, a hammer used to nail a house together. You know what I'm saying? So um, <clears throat> that's, Essentially, I think I think that's what uh, you're referring to. Yes. That that a change in mental and mental and everything. Yeah, it was everything. Mental. Obviously, the physical the physical difference is very visible, mm -hmm. right? But there was something noticeable about you in the conversation. Yeah. And I was like, man, Jared Cannonier is changing. Jared Cannonier is different, and Jared Cannonier looks like now a guy that could potentially challenge for a UFC championship, especially at middleweight. And you've gotten better and better and better. And even in the moments where things haven't gone well. You've never let it deter you. But now you stand on the verge of the biggest fight of your career. And there are times in guys that, like Israel Adesanya, where people almost put him on a pedestal. How do you normalize a guy like that, who has millions and millions of Instagram followers, he has a massive following, he seems larger than life. How do you normalize that person that you're going to step into the octagon with on Saturday? Well, just realizing, it's realizing that all that other stuff mm -hmm. is like, I got my questions here. That's why good. I'm yeah. not looking on my phone. These it's are my all good, questions. Brother. All that other stuff is like clothes, layers of clothes. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of layers of clothes. And underneath that, he's only a man. You know what I'm saying? Flesh, blood, bones. He has to breathe oxygen just like me. Mm -hmm. Eat and shit and piss just <laughs> yeah, like yeah, me. Yeah, 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 for know? sure. So, um, Put his pants on the same way, one leg yeah, at a time. Exactly. Some people might be able to do a tooth legs at a Man, time. Man, then they float. <laughs> Jared, then, then they float. If I ever see somebody put on their pants with two feet at the same time, I'm out of there. So people can jump That's really a ghost, high, man. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, he's only a man. As great as he, as great of things as he can do, he's capable of. You know, he's tapped into his potential. He's able to do great things, and that's great. You know what I'm saying? And I've done the same thing. I've tapped yeah. into my potential. I'm on my path to find my greatness. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, I know that um, my only goal is always to be better than myself. I don't compare myself to anybody else. I'm not trying to be better than the champ or better than the Hall of Fame or anything like that. The only person in this race is me. And he's right here next to me. He's right here in front of me, behind me, he's inside of me. And I got to battle with this thing day in, day out. That's the task at hand. The moment you wake up, what am I going to do? I, I got to feed this thing. It's asking for food. It's asking mm -hmm. for this. It's asking for that. So. That's the thing I'm trying to, one, strengthen and do the thing that I need to do to be a better person. You know, I was on a meeting just recently and people were talking and they said, is it as simple as Jared early and Izzy as the fight go longer? And I said to them, I said, in the Kelvin Gaslam fight, Jared showed that he can go 25 minutes and go 25 minutes effectively. This fight goes long. Do you feel like that plays to your benefit? Do you feel like you need to go get this guy? Because here's my thought, and I could be completely wrong. Mm -hmm. We have seen guys like Izzy who are tremendous counter strikers. But we have also seen him in spots where if you don't press him, you find yourself in the fight as the fight goes on. How, how is the approach for Jared Cannonier when you look like you have every tool in the book to go try to knock him out early mm -hmm. and go 25 minutes with him? I think it goes... I mean, that's one side of the same coin, you know. The longer it goes, I can get more comfortable in there and I can find my range and start landing some shots and put them away. Same thing goes with him, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He has that level of experience and, and, and skill as well. Um, 
It's really hard. The best way I can, I can use an anime reference. I know yeah, you're not an anime I'm guy. I'm not an anime guy, but boy, <laughs> somebody watching this is. <laughs> but the Dragon Ball Z reference where they're, they're both shooting power Yo, beams both at each other. Y'all, both some Dragon Ball Z and, like and do. Oh, yeah. Dragon Ball Z is a classic, dude. 90s, man. You My like, kid watches that shit. Oh, yeah? Yeah, every morning. Oh, you got him on the right path. <laughs> He's going to be a good fighter. But uh, it's like those energies are combating. And um, I want to go in that octagon with big energy mm -hmm. you know we're using bde yeah. you know big energy yeah, yeah, for sure. you know what i'm saying so uh i know that there's been a theme for this one you know what i'm saying uh like uh big he's a big dog in the yard which you know arguably he has shown generally that. he is he's yeah. got the belt he is the big dog in the yard you know what i'm saying but uh i'm a big dog too yeah so um and i got and my bite is b bigger than my bark i'd say mm -hmm. so i'm ready to i'm just Again, ready to go in there and uh, mass up on this man yeah. and and take the belt away because I ain't trying to, you know, sneak it away from him, yeah, ease sure. it out of his hands or lightly take it off of his hands. I want, I'm going to grab you a hold of that belt. Take a hold of it. Grab it yeah, from him. Take exactly. it from him. Yes. Jared, what do you, if you're comfortable telling me this, a guy that came down from heavyweight, what do you weigh when you walk into the octagon? I'm maybe... Low twos, high nineties, yeah. maybe. Because you look, you look big and I mean, obviously yeah. you look big and strong, but you don't look puffy. No. In there, when you get back into the octagon. No. Two hundred pounds, probably. Yeah, two hundred pounds. Nice. I don't, I don't cut a lot of weight. I don't like. Really? That doesn't not feel good. It sucks. You know, you know. Look shoot. at me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this shit didn't just start yesterday. Yeah. This is a no. lifetime of me doing this to myself and then going back there. Yes. Right. No. Exactly. It was. It's not fun, you know. Mm -hmm. Even the little weight that I have to cut, it's not fun getting yeah. hot and sweaty and then sitting in a dehydrated state. So, uh, but you know, it's uh, it is what it is. Yep. I am more than prepared to do it. If it had to have been, if it had to be a, a hard way cut, I'm gonna you do it, it easy anyway. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, but again, I'm on the path for another easy way cut, man. My man. So what does Saturday night look like for Jared Cannon there? All the people. I mean, when I asked you how many people you went, because I know how people travel, mm -hmm. right? From Alaska, Arizona, your wife's family, your family. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of people in there supporting Jared Cannon there. They say and new Jared Cannon there becomes a world champion. What does that feel like to you? Because that means a whole nother level of things, the financial security, of recognition, of it just, everything changes when they wrap that 13 pounds of gold around your waist. Mm. What does that feel like to you before you hand it over to your wife? What does that feel like for Jared Cannonier? Um, well, there's going to be a little bit more of that, that feeling of relief, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's done. The thing, that thing is done. So there's going to be that feeling of relief. Of course, that overwhelming feeling of achievement that, uh, I won't be able to explain until I get in there. You know, you know how it is, though. Yeah. But, um, but, and you've let yourself envision that already. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it feels. I don't want to say it's going to feel overwhelming because it's definitely going to feel. I'm going to feel that emotion welling up inside of me. But uh, again, I played this over in my mind a million times. You know, I'm going to be present in the moment, and I'm gonna handle it the way a king would. My man. Good luck this weekend, dog. You are the man. Thank you, brother. Guys, make sure you check out UFC 276 as Jared Cannonier, the killer gorilla. Soul brother Jared, as Izzy was calling him, <laughs> challenges Israel to sign you for the UFC middleweight championship. Make sure you guys like and subscribe and look out for so much content. Another great DC check-in with my man Jared Cannonier. Good luck this weekend again. Till next time, guys. Peace.